You see, to the world, you are part good and part bad. But it's from their perspective. Hey, you're good in that you belong, say, to their religion. You're bad in that you don't follow it in quite the way they think you should. <laughs> good in so and so relative to others, you're bad in something else relative to other people. And so it goes on. But with God, in the spirit realm, he has only allowed you to do what is actually a blessing to all. Why would a perfect God, perfect in love and ability, choose anything else? Why would he deliberately choose something that truly was damaging to someone? that have benefit to everyone else. That would be very sad. He doesn't need to be handicapped in such a way. So, to the world, each person does some things good and some things bad from their mistaken perspective because they don't know that God is all-powerful and perfect. They see it with their eyes instead of God's eyes. <laughs> and find this universe wanting. It is because of who they are, you see. The good and the evil that we see It's because of our childhood inadequacy of comprehension, experience and understanding. But if you saw it with God's eyes, you would see that all things are perfect. He's a perfect God. He's able to make things perfect, complete all a blessing. He doesn't need to make anything that's not a blessing or put up with anything that's not a blessing. You are loved from the beginning. You are in eternity, the wonderful person you ever will be, ever was and ever are. When you know who you are, who you are, you are not the body, you are not what appears in this dream world. You are what you are in spirit, and that is of God. And everything is of God, there isn't anything that isn't of God. How could he exist but for God? And what would he have made it with? other than what he is and what he makes. You are the blessing. Wherever you go, you are the presence of God. And this person, though you may mistakenly see them as troublesome or, or a blessing, are a blessing in a very perfect and complete way. So you take hold of God's view, God's understanding. You know your God. You're not resisting these circumstances, this apparent calamity that may have hit you, as you see it. It's a blessing. And sure, you don't understand it 
how it's a blessing. But you can choose to trust. And every time you do, you're saying, Heavenly Father, I know you. I have an understanding of something of your infinite goodness. And I'm going to take this opportunity to trust you, even though I do not understand it all. Why should my understanding stop my trust and devotion to you? Love you, Lord.